بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم. So for those who were here last week, uh, we took the statement of the author عليه رحمة الله إمام البرغهاري where he said that speech or rhetoric, debates and argumentation is something that's newly introduced. It's an innovation. And it causes doubt in the heart. It puts doubt in a person's heart. Even if the person achieves the truth in the sunnah. For those who are here, very quickly, what was intended by uh, debates and argumentations being an innovative matter? المراد بالخصومة والجدال والمراء محدث آه هو المراد محدث يعني محدث والجديد ما كان موجود زمن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أو الصحابة لكن all right, so as we mentioned uh, last week, what's intended is that a person, he argues and he debates in a way that he's trying to uh, reject the truth and promote falsehood. Because we mentioned uh, with guidelines, it's permissible for a Muslim to debate with a non-Muslim or a person who's upon misguidance. There's guidelines, of course, but with this statement right here where he said to you know, have rhetoric and to debate and argue, this is something newly introduced in terms of rejecting the truth and promoting falsity. This is what Ahlul Bid'ah do. When they have to make debates and argumentation, it's for this purpose. They're trying to promote their, their foolishness and they're trying to reject the truth. So we're going to continue the class. We're going to keep it a little shorter tonight. Uh, the same of Arthur Ali, Rahmatullah, he said, Wa'alam Rahimakallah, and Al Kalama fil Rub, Ta'ala Muhdeth, Wahua Bidaratun Mubalala. So he said, No, may Allah have mercy upon you, that speaking about the Lord, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is something that's newly introduced, is an innovation and is misguidance. Wala you take Hellamu fil Rubbi, Illa Bima, Wasa Fabihi, Nafsa, who are Isa Wajella fil Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not to be spoken about except with that which he has described himself with in the Qur'an. وَمَا بَيَّنَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لِأَصْحَابِهِ And that which the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم has clarified to his companions. فَهُوَ جَلَّ ثَنَاؤُهُ وَاحِدٌ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ There is nothing that is like him and he is the all here, the all seer. Our Lord, He is the first and He doesn't have a beginning. And He's the last and He doesn't have an ending. And He knows that which is secret and that which is hidden. And He has ascended over the throne. And His knowledge encompasses every place. وَلَا يَخْلُو مِنْ عِلْمِهِ مَكَانٍ And there's no place that his knowledge does not encompass. So in the explanation, Shaykh Hussain, Hafizahullah, he says what's intended by أَنَّ الْكَلَامْ فِي الرَّبْ تَعَالَ مُحْدَثْ وَهُوَ بِدْعَةٌ وَضَلَالٌ So when you hear this, that speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that is an innovation and is misguidance, what is this with regard to him? He says, الْكَلَامُ فِي ذَاتِ الرَّبْ سُبْحَانَ this is with regard to the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The intricate nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَفِي أَسْمَائِهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ أَمْرُ النُّحْدَةِ To talk about His names and His attributes, this is something that's newly introduced in the religion. أَحْدَثَهُ أَهْلُ الضَّلَالِ الَّذِينَ لَا يُسَلِّمُونَ لِلنُّصُوصِ And the people who did this, they introduced this innovation, are those who are upon misguidance, who do not submit themselves to the text. Meaning the text in the Quran and the Sunnah. 
وَلَيْسَ عِنْدَهُمْ خَشْيَةٌ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And they don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَهُمْ يَتَكَلَّمُونَ فِي ذَاتِ الرَّبِّ وَيَتَكَلَّمُونَ فِي أَسْمَائِهِ وَصِفَاتِهِ And the reason why he said this, they don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is because they speak about the essence of Allah and about His names and His attributes. وَيَجْحَدُونَ وَيَنْفُونَ مَا أَثْبَتَهُ اللَّهِ لِنَفْسِهِ They deny and they reject or they negate what Allah has established for Himself. وَمَا أَثْبَتَهُ لَهُ رَسُولُهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ And what His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم has established for Him. If a person is speaking about a worldly affair and he doesn't have knowledge about it and this is very prevalent. A person might watch a few YouTube videos and he acts like he's a mechanic or he acts like he's an expert in something but he really doesn't have knowledge and then he tells other people you should do such and such people if they find out that that's not the case he's not going to be credible they want to say he's a phony he's a fraud and this is with regard to worldly affairs so how much more so if a person is speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that's not befitting that's dangerous extremely dangerous it shows that person doesn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَأْتُونَ مِنْ عِنْدِهِمْ بِآرَاءٍ وَيَقُولُونَ هَذِهِ هِيَ الصَّوَادِ And these type of people, these misguided individuals, they come with things from themselves, as we say, shooting from the hip. And they have these views and these opinions, and they say, this is what's correct. يَتَكَلَّمُونَ فِي تَفْسِيرِ النُّصُوصِ فِي غَيْرِ تَفْسِيرِهَا They speak about the explanation of the text from the, the Qur'an and the Sunnah in a way that's not correct. They're not giving the, the correct explanation. And they say, or they say, we don't understand them. These texts that's pertaining to uh, the names and the attributes of Allah, His essence, they say, we, we don't understand them. We leave it to Allah. We don't understand what it means. وَيَصِيرُ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ وَكَلَامُ رَسُولِهِ بِمَنْزِلَةِ الْكَلَامِ الْأَعْجَمِي الذي لا يفهمه العرب. So the speech of Allah and the speech of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is like the speech of a foreigner that the Arab do not understand. فالواجب على المسلمين أن يستمروا مع الطريق الصحيح. So what's obligatory for the Muslims to do is to remain upon the correct path when it comes to this issue, as it pertains to the names and attributes of Allah. وعلى طريق وعلى طريق السلف and upon the way of the Salaf. And to not pay any regard or any attention to these people who are leading others astray. And they debate and they argue concerning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they don't have the authority for it. They argue as it pertains to the Quran. And they argue and they debate as it relates to the Sunnah. This is their situation. That of argumentation. And this is something that we mentioned this before. That you have some people that they're in the field of da'wah. They have like YouTube channels and they are debating, you know, different people, maybe non Muslims or whatever the case is. Some of them, perhaps they have a good intention, and some of them they don't. But. Nonetheless, as we mentioned before, there's guidelines for it. But if a person is ignorant, a person is not qualified, and he's putting himself on a platform, debating with individuals, then as we mentioned before, perhaps he's going to cause more harm than good. Perhaps you're going to be a reason for people turning away from the sunnah and embracing falsehood. So a person's situation, if they're not qualified, they shouldn't, they definitely shouldn't be engaging in debates with non-Muslims or people upon it. Innovation. Leave that to those who are qualified. So it's imperative uh, to be cautious of these type of people. And he's talking about Ahlul Dara. These people don't follow the Quran and Sunnah. These people are innovators and they follow their desires. The statements, this point is very important. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not to be talked about except with that which He has described Himself with in the Qur'an. 
لما نهى عن الجدال في الله عز وجل والخصومات في أسماء الله وصفاته بيّن الواجب. So after the author, he prohibited, right, having argumentation and debates with regard to Allah Azza wa Jal and debates about his names and his attributes, he clarified what's obligatory. وَهُوَ أَن نُقِرَّ الْقُرْآنَ وَالسُنَّةَ كَمَا جَاءَ And it is that we accept the Qur'an and the Sunnah as it comes. The way that we find the text, that's how we leave it. He says, عَلَى مَعْنَاهَا الْمَعْنَى الْمَأْخُوذُ مِنَ اللُّغَةِ الَّتِي نَزَلَ بِهَا الْقُرْآنُ وَالسُنَّةِ We take it in terms of the meaning that it was derived from. Right? The language it was revealed, uh, the Qur'an and the Sunnah were revealed in. فَالْعِلْمْ مَعْرُوفٍ مَعْنَاهُ فِي اللغة. So, الْعِلْمْ, right, knowledge, is well known. In, it's known what it means. In English, when you say knowledge, everybody knows what that means in the English language. كَذَلِكَ الْوَجْهُ معروف. Likewise, the face is well known. Everybody knows what face is. وَالْعَيْنُ وَالْيَدْ Likewise, the eye, the hand, وَالْإِسْتِوَاء uh, To ascend, وَالْعُلُو right, To go high or to be high. كل هذه وأمثالها معروف معناها في اللغة العربية التي نزل بها القرآن. He says uh, all of this and these and things that are similar is well known what it means in the Arabic language, which the Quran was revealed in. أهل الضلال يقولون. The people who are upon misguidance. They say this. ليس هذا الكلام على ظاهره. They say this speech, or يعني when it comes to the names and the attributes. Is not left based upon what's apparent from its meaning. When qasimu ila qismin, there's two groups. Pay attention to these uh, two groups. Qismun qalu natawakkaf. So this is the first group, and they're misguided. They are those who say we have tawakkaf. Right? We don't delve into it. When aqul zahiruha ghairu murad, they say what's apparent from these names or attributes or these verses. Uh, this is not what's intended. So for example, uh, the verse, وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ And the face of your Lord, full of honor and majesty, will remain forever. They say what's intended by the face is not really the face. It doesn't mean that. They say it means something else. وَلَا نَفْهَمُ الْمُرَادَ مِنْهَا They say we don't truly understand what's implied by it. وَهُمْ الْمُفَوِّضَةِ this is the name of, of this group. al Right? They say we leave it to Allah. We, we, you know, we read the verses or we read these a hadith that have these names and these attributes, but we really don't know what it means. وَقِسْمٌ هُمْ الْمُؤَوِّلَةِ The second group are those who make false interpretations. وَهُمُ الْأَكْثَرِ And they're the majority. أَوَّلُهَا بِغَيْرِ مَعْنَاهَ الصَّحِيحِ And so what they do... When they come across a name or an attribute of Allah, they misconstrue it. They interpret it in a way that's not correct. So they go astray and they lead others astray. So these type of individuals who are misguided and they lead others astray, they... You know, they busy the people with this type of rhetoric. And they fill their books with this, these type of argumentations and debates without any benefit. So that which is obligatory is that a person submits himself to that which has come in the Qur'an and the Sunnah as it pertains to the names and attributes. The Qur'an is revelation from Allah. The Sunnah is revelation from Allah. Right? You can't just uh, have your understanding. Your understanding can't just be based upon the Qur'an. You have some people, they just say that we're just going to take from the Qur'an and we're going to, the sunnah, you don't have to take it. If you were to do that, when it comes to something as essential as the prayer, you're not going to know how to pray. In the, in the Qur'an, it's mentioned in numerous verses. Well, establish the prayer. How do you establish the prayer? Are the details mentioned in the Qur'an? No. So you have to have the sunnah. You have to take from the sunnah, the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in order to know how to pray correctly. 
in order to know how to fast, in order to know how to do the other obligations. Both of them are revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says what's obligatory is to submit to that which has come in the Qur'an and the Sunnah in terms of the names and the attributes of Allah. عَلَى مُرَادِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولًا Based upon what Allah and His Messenger has intended. لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ أَعْلَمُ بِنَفْسِهِ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's the most knowledgeable as it pertains to Himself. وَأَعْلَمُ بِغَيْرِهِ وَأَعْلَمُ بِغَيْرِهِ And He's more knowledgeable uh, than anyone else. In uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah, in the verse, uh, وَإِذْ قَالُوا اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بَنَا مَرْيَمْ أَأَنْتَ قُلْتَ لِلنَّاسِ اتَّخِذُونِي وَأُمِّيَ إِلَهِينِ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ And this is on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And this is going to uh, يعني, be a proof and evidence against the Christians in particular. It's going to be a proof and evidence against the Christians in particular. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say the meaning of the verse. And on that day, on the day of judgment, Allah is going to say to Isa, the son of, 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 of Maryam, did you tell the people to take me, to take yourself and, and your mother as two gods beside me? Isa alayhi salam is going to say, Subhanak, glorified is you. It wasn't for me to say something that I had no right to say. If I said it, then you already know I said it. You know what's in my inner self, and I don't know what's in yours. And indirectly, and he's saying, you're more knowledgeable about yourself then I, then I am. You're more knowledgeable about me and yourself. تعلم ما في نفسي ولا أعلم ما في نفسك. إنك أنت علام الغيوب. You are the knower of the unseen. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He's the most knowledgeable about himself. وأعلم الخلق بالله ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. And the most knowledgeable of the creation as it pertains to Allah is the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. أما نحن فعلمنا قاصر. As for us, then our knowledge is limited. We have limited knowledge. Right? He says, we, we don't know a lot as it pertains to ourselves. When it comes to, you know, the joints, uh, the lig- ligaments in our body, the veins, uh, the senses that we have touched. Uh, hearing, smell, so on and so forth. There's things that we don't know. How many times do you hear doctors talking about ailments and diseases, chronic ailments and diseases that people get? And they constantly saying, we don't even know how a person even gets it. They don't know if it's something that's uh, a person inherited, that he gets it from his parents or his forefathers or whatever the case is, or if he gets it from something else. He's constantly saying things like this. These are sciences. They said we don't even know how it originates. We don't even truly understand the reality of it. There's a lot of things we don't know. Do you know what the soul is? Do you truly know what the soul is? Uh, intellect. What, what, what really is the intellect? إِذَا كُنْتَ لَا تَعْرِفُ شَيْئًا مِنْ جِسْمِكَ وَلَا مِنْ نَفْسِكَ فَكَيْفَ تَتَكَلَّمُ فِي ذَاتِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَىٰ أَلَّتِ لَا يَعْلَمُهَا إِلَّا هُوْ سُبْحَانَ So, if this is the case, right, you don't know about things in your own body. You don't know about the details of, you know, the ligaments, the joints, you know, these type of affairs. You don't even know about it when it comes to your own body. Then how can you speak about the essence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can you speak about his essence, which is something that only he knows about? He knows what's before them, and he knows what's behind them, and they cannot encompass his knowledge. What's intended by? He knows what's before them, and he knows what's behind them. What's intended by that verse? He says the actions. Mm, close. Um, 
He knows what's before them and what's behind them. The brother is kind of close, he mentioned, in terms of their actions. Uh, we hear this in, it's in, this is in Ayatul Kursi, in similar verse. The, the word is very similar. Huh? The names and attributes. Allah knows what's before them. He knows what's going to happen to them in the hereafter. وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ And what's behind them in terms of what they did in the life of this world. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِهِ عِلْمًا They cannot encompass his knowledge. هَذَا خَارِجٌ عَنْ مَعْلُومَاتِهِمْ وَعَنْ تَصَوَّرَاتِهِمْ Right, this is beyond their, uh, you know, their, their knowledge and their imagination. In this dunya, just think about it. If you were to look at the sun, this is something that's created. If you were to look at the sun for a minute, what do you, what do you think is going to happen to your eye for one minute? All right, it's, it's going to destroy your retina. You probably go blind, completely blind for one minute. Just look. You know, when it's an e- eclipse, what do you? They, they constantly say in the news, you know, where make sure you wear protective eyewear, is because you could go blind. You literally, there's people who go, you know, partially blind, and some of them actually go completely blind. If you were to look at the sun for one minute, you go blind. So. Just imagine if a person is saying, that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like this. Or he's like that. You can't even look at the sun, so how can you describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And you can't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya. And we mentioned previously, when Musa alayhi salam asked uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him himself. قَالَ أَنظُرْ شُوَ الْآيَةً رَبِّ أَرِنِي أَنظُرْ إِلَيْكِ My Lord... Show me yourself. He said, you do not have the ability to see me. He said, rather look to the mountain. Uh, and if it's, you know, if it stays, then you're going to see me. If it stays in place, then you're going to see me. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started to appear, uh, and he, and he really, in, in reality, he didn't really appear. But whatever took place, uh, the mountain يعني, blew up, for lack of better words. It's a mountain. وَخَرَّ مُوسَى صَعِقًا Musa alayhi salam passed out. He passed out. He's a prophet. He's a prophet. Kalim Allah. Allah spoke to him directly. He didn't have the ability to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya. So any other person... Of course, he's not going to have the ability. Even the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he was alive. This is something that's specific to the hereafter. So if this is the case, then how can a person describe, you know, the essence of Allah or his names and his attributes? This is it's not possible. It's beyond our imagination. Allah is not to be compared with his creation. This is degrading and belittling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find from the Christians, they make pictures of what they portray to be Isa alayhi salam. Right? He's, he's sitting at the, they call it the Last Supper. And he's sitting with his so-called disciples. And for whatever reason, he's white. Right? Every person who knows the description of Isa, he wasn't from Europe. All right? But they say, this is Isa and he's sitting at a table. The majority of Christians say that Isa alayhi salam is either God or the Son of God. They say he's God or the Son of God. So they portray him sitting at a table and his food on the table. And everybody knows if you eat food, what's going to happen? Yeah, we, we keep it, we keep it um, G-rated. You're going to have to, you know, relieve yourself. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah Jalla wa Ala, He said, كَانَا يَأْكُلَانَ الطَّعَامِ uh, Isa and his mother. They used to eat food. They used to eat food. Even the Christians, they acknowledge this. They, they put it in their pictures. They put it in their, their churches. They, you know, the Last Supper. That was his so-called Last Supper. So if that's the case, if he used to eat, then that necessitates, you have to go to the bathroom. Right, those things that are going to come as a result of eating is going to happen. So is that not the epitome of degrading what they, in their estimation, say is God? You say he's God or the son of God. He has divinity. If that's the case, if you say he eats, then that means he has to go to the bathroom. Can that be someone who truly is God? Of course not. 
So this is actually degrading Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him similar to the creation. And of course, Isa alayhi salam is a prophet of Allah. He's a prophet of Allah. فَهُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِنَفْسِهِ وَبِغَيْرِهِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more knowledgeable about himself and, and anyone else. وَأَصْدَقُ قِيلًا He's the most truthful in speech. وَأَحْسَنُ حَدِيثًا مِنْ خَلْقِهِ uh, And his speech is better than his creation. كَمَا يَقُولُ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهِ فِي الْوَاسِقِيَّةِ As it was stated by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah Allah in Al-Aqidah al-Wasitiyyah. And inshallah will suffice with this for tonight. Uh, wa subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadwan la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.